Hi, my name is Justine Harkness, and in this video, we'll look at how to use experimental data to determine the rate law of a reaction. The first thing that you need to do to determine the rate law from a set of experimental data is to generate the data table itself. This may be something that you have done if you have taken a general chemistry lab course, but if not, let's look at how you would do that. So you would start with all of your reactants and you will vary the concentration of only one reactant at a time and measure the resulting rate. So in your data chart, you will have several columns that have concentrations and rates. And now that you have your data chart, you'll be able to use it to determine your both reaction order for each of your reactants and calculate the rate constant. So to do this, what you want to find are two trials where the concentration of only one reactant changes. And you'll take the ratio of these two trials to see how changing the concentration changes the overall rate. So you'll find if you say double your concentration and you find a doubling of the rate, you know that you have a first order reaction. Whereas if you say double the concentration and you see a quadrupling of your rate, you know that you have a second order reaction, at least for that particular reactant. You'll do this for each of your reactants. And at the end, you'll be able to determine your rate constant by just picking a trial and substituting in both the rate and the concentrations to solve for your rate constant. So let's take a look at how to do this using some experimental data. So here we have a reaction between sulfur dioxide and ozone along with some experimental data. Now the first thing you might want to do is just to write out a generic rate law. So here we have just sulfur dioxide to some exponent. We don't know what it is yet. We have ozone also to an unknown exponent and we have our rate constant. So we're gonna use this data to fill in those values. So the first thing we gotta do is find two trials where we vary the concentration of one reactant but not the other. And we might look at experiments one and two. Now here we are holding the concentration of sulfur dioxide constant, so essentially this is times one, and we are varying the concentration of ozone. So we're gonna take a ratio of these two trials. So we can do trial one over trial two and plug in our value. So here we have the ratio of the rates. Notice that this will just simplify out to one. We have the ratio of sulfur dioxide. Notice this also would simplify out to one. One to any power will just equal one. So this term will just completely drop out of the equation and we could ignore it going forward. And then we have 0.4 over 0.2. That will give us two. So this will simplify to one equals two to the y. Remember any number to the zero power is one. So here y equals zero and we can plug that into our rate law equation saying that the rate will be completely independent of the concentration of ozone. Now we have to figure out what the order is for sulfur dioxide. Now at this point, it doesn't really matter what the concentration of ozone is since we've already determined that it is zero order. So let's look at trials two and three. So we can do the ratio of trial three over trial two. I will note that it doesn't matter which one you do on top. So you could do trial two over trial three as well, as long as you're consistent with uh, what's on the numerator and what's on the denominator. Here we have 1.062 over 0.118. This is equal to nine. 0.75 over 0.25 is three. And again, since it is zero order for ozone, this will essentially just drop out of the equation. So this simplifies to nine equals three to the x. Thus, x must equal two. So we can plug in two for x in our rate law equation. And now the last thing we have to do is solve for our rate constant k. 
We can do this by plugging in our values from any trial into our rate law equation. So let's plug in our values for experiment one. This is what we get. And with a little bit of algebraic rearrangement, we can solve for k of the 1.9 molar to the negative 1, second to the negative 1, which is also consistent with a second order reaction. So our overall rate law equation would then be uh, the rate is equal to 1.9 inverse molar inverse seconds, that's our k, times the concentration of sulfur dioxide raised to the second power. So now you should feel more comfortable using experimental data to determine a rate law equation.